I'm an electrician. I make videos for electricians. If that interests you, give me a follow. Check out the rest of my page. This video is more aimed at apprentices and a common question they ask. Why do we separate grounds and neutrals in a subpanel? I'm going to explain why, but first, I have a very simple, easy demonstration that shows the dangers of not separating grounds and neutrals. Okay, basic subpanel still under construction, so there's some temporary stuff going on, but that bonding screw is removed. By replacing that bonding screw, it's the same as not separating grounds and neutrals. So let's see how it functions with the grounds and neutrals separated. So I have a hot plate plugged in, everything's separated properly. We got about 14 amps on the hot, and then on the neutral going back to the main panel, we get 14 amps. Well, 13, high 13, right? 14, we'll call it. Everything's right, correct? So now I get the bonding screw in, but not tightened yet. And we're still at 13 amps. Okay, so now watch what happens when I, I'm on the neutral, see that? Watch what happens when I tighten this bonding screw. I'm tightening her down. I don't slip off one-handed yet. Oh, there we go. I tighten the bonding screw and my 13 goes down to six. I still have 13 on my hot, but I only have six on the neutral. Where'd the rest of it go? Well, it's going back on the ground. We now have seven amps on the ground. Before I explain why that happened, I just want to point out that hot plate is being fed off an arc fault to GFI combination dual function breaker and it was not tripping during that demonstration. That breaker was not malfunctioning. It shouldn't trip there the way it's designed. So why is that happening? Now, it comes down to one of the biggest misconceptions to the point of it's almost a lie because everybody says it. You hear it all the time. Electricity takes the least path of resistance. That's just not, it's not that simple. It's basically not true. Electricity will take the least path of resistance, but it takes all paths in proportion to the resistance. If electricity only took the least path of resistance, you'd only get one light bulb in your house. Now, as an apprentice, you know that because you're studying parallel circuits and you know the amperage will take different paths depending on the resistance. So when you don't separate grounds and neutrals, you're giving your return current two paths back and it's gonna take both. The other way I like to teach why we separate grounds and neutrals and sub panel is we separate grounds and neutrals everywhere except for one spot. You separate them in light fixtures, you separate them in receptacles, you separate them in junction box, you separate them everywhere. But for some reason we throw circuit breakers in that box and the apprentices think it becomes a panel, a main panel. It's just a junction box with overcurrent protection. That's how you have to think of a subpanel. It's a current, is it a junction box with overcurrent protection? And every junction box you've ever done, you separate grounds and neutrals. Clearly, we could spend a whole day teaching about all the intricacies that just went on there. But hopefully, this plants a seed and gets you thinking in the right direction.